Welcome to Tala Talks NICU. Today we're going to be talking about TTN or transient tachypnea of the newborn. It's got lots of other names. It's also called um, retained fetal lung fluid and wet lung syndrome. So what is TTN? TTN stands for transient, that's the first T, so transient means it doesn't last for a long time. And really, if TTN lasts longer than about three days, then you're missing the diagnosis. Something else is probably going on. Tachypnea means when a baby is breathing rapidly. So normally a baby can breathe up to about 60 times a minute. Babies breathe faster than older kids and adults. If they're breathing faster than 60 times a minute, then that is considered tachypnea. And then the N is newborn, TTN. And a newborn is a baby that was just born. So TTN is a disease that happens in term as well as late preterm babies. Obviously, it can also happen in earlier in, in babies of a younger gestational age, but they have so many other issues that it doesn't become such a big problem compared to the immaturity of the lungs and everything. It affects about 1% to 2% of all babies born, and a lot of the times it ends up with the babies having to come to the NICU. So what causes TTN? During pregnancy, the lungs are filled with fluid. The lungs don't have to do the job of breathing during pregnancy. The mother's placenta does the job of breathing during pregnancy. It exchanges the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. After the baby is born, that fluid in the lungs needs to go away. If the fetal lung fluid is still in the lungs after the baby is born, then the baby will end up developing TTN. So how does the baby get rid of that fluid before the baby is born? It's done in three big parts. The first big part, or a third of that fluid, is sucked up by some of the cells lining the lungs, the alveoli. So instead of producing the fluid, they now start sucking about some of that in. And that's about a third of the fluid they get rid of that way. Another third of the fluid is kind of squeezed out from the lungs during the vaginal delivery process. The combination of all the steroids and the hormones and everything else gets rid of another third of that fluid. And then the remaining third of the fetal lung fluid, the baby gets rid of after it's born by crying, you know, so it's very good when babies cry, so crying and just breathing and just kind of like pushing that fluid back into the blood vessels in the lungs. So you can imagine that if a mother had a C-section, so didn't go through the traumatic vaginal delivery, then that baby is going to have an increased risk of retained fetal lung fluid, or TTN. Even more than that, if the mother had an elective C-section where she wasn't even in labor beforehand, so those cells in the lungs didn't start sucking that fluid back in, then that baby is going to be at even more increased risk of having TTN. So a C-section, especially an elective C-section where there was no labor before it, increases the risk of TTN. Also, an infant of a diabetic mother also has increased risk factor for TTN. So what are the signs and symptoms of TTN? As opposed to RDS, which is kind of like the disease of immature lungs, those babies start acting ill from the second that they're born. So they're like breathing hard and everything in the delivery room. Whereas TTN, it might not be an immediate manifestation of the signs and symptoms. They could get worse in the first couple of hours of life. Obviously, the most important symptom of TTN, since it's actually in the definition, is tachypnea, which is that the baby's breathing rapidly. Um, the babies can also have nasal flaring, which I tried really hard to do, but I can't do it, which is where the nostrils kind of go out and back in again really quickly. They can also do this weird thing called grunting, which really sounds like grunting. It's kind of like, ugh, ugh. And that's the baby trying to stent the lungs open. Um, and they can also have retractions. Retractions, uh, any time you see the skin get sucked in under the lungs. So you can have subcostal retractions under the ribs. You can have retrosternal retractions right behind the sternum. You can have suprasternal retractions. But all those are signs of having TTN. Generally, it's quite a mild disease. So these are not babies that are going to be really cyanotic and can't get like the oxygen inside their bodies. In fact, if a baby is needing like 50% of oxygen to try to keep the saturation levels okay, then it's not going to be TTN. It's mostly kind of more mild symptoms like that. You diagnose TTN mostly clinically. A baby uh, was born by a repeat C-section, mother was never in labor, and baby starts breathing rapidly shortly after birth. So it's mostly a clinical diagnosis. But if you do get an x-ray, then what you would expect to see is that the lungs just look really wet. So they're normally well expanded because it's not an issue with 
um, immaturity of the lungs, but they can have kind of interstitial inf infiltrates and then you can have some fluid between the fissures as well. So what is the treatment? Really, it's just supportive. Eventually, you just have to give the baby what it needs while it slowly gets the rest of that fluid out. So it could be that they might need a little bit of an oxygen cannula if the baby's needing a little bit of extra oxygen. It could be that the baby needs CPAP or continuous positive airway pressure, which is where you put the mask over the baby's face and it actually stents open the lungs further. We definitely use that when babies are grunting. But like we said, it's a self-limiting disease. Normally it lasts about three days. And so you just have to support the baby during those three days. If it lasts longer than three days or three to four days, it's probably not TTN. It might be a pneumonia, something else might be going on. Obviously, if the baby is breathing very rapidly, then it can't really take a bottle or breastfeed by mouth. So we may have to put an IV in the baby and give some sugar water, or the baby might need some garage feeds just until it starts breathing a little bit slower and the baby can start feeding orally. So the prognosis for babies with TTN is fantastic. They should all be able to go home and you know grow up and become professional marathon runners or do whatever else they want to do. The Piano players. Yeah, well, you, why you don't need your lungs to play the piano? <laughs> trumpet players. <laughs> trumpet players, right, that's it. Become trumpet players. Um, there is some tiny association that they might have increased risk of asthma, but generally the prognosis is considered excellent. I hope you learned something today. Please remember to like and to subscribe to the channel and please add comments if there's anything else that you'd like us to talk about. Thank you.